All right, man. So this is a uh, special edition of Inside the U. We are here, or I am here, with uh, Jared from Seacoast Hockey Officials. Uh, if anybody has been following along, we're making some uh, changes for spring summer uh, coming up in May here. Uh, we're going to be bringing on Seacoast Hockey Officials um, to help oversee our officiating and scorekeeping and hopefully um, improve a bit. So, uh Jared's with me, so if, Jared, you can just talk about uh, Seacoast and, and what you guys are about, uh, you know. Yeah, absolutely. First off, you know, Seacoast appreciates you, Steve, and uh, your team. Uh, thank you for giving us the chance to uh, represent the UAHL. And uh, we're really excited to get going with you guys moving into the spring and summer. So, yeah, Seacoast Hockey Officials, we were, uh, we were founded in September of seventeen. Uh, everything that I created for Seacoast was about uh, being a team, um, education, everything that, you know, I feel lacks in a lot of associations uh, throughout the country. Um, when I first started officiating, I didn't really take it serious. I was in college working a lot of adult hockey in local rinks. And, um, you know, that's kind of where I got my officiating from is from adult hockey learning certain situations that you don't learn in youth hockey. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, with that Dealing being with said, men. <laughs> what's that? Dealing with grown men, you know? Yeah. <laughs> well, then, you know, and, and that's truly, you know, something that an official really learns in adult hockey versus youth hockey before they get into juniors or college, or if they're very fortunate pro hockey, you're working with adults. So you're forced to kind of move around and, and communicate. And you see the psychological factors working with an adult versus with youth kids. You, 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 kids don't really get it at that age. So you can't really yeah. have conversations. And unfortunately, the coaches at youth really aren't educated either, you know. So, but anyways, Seacoast is based off of what I've learned through adult hockey, which helped me get to pro hockey, I would say, a lot quicker than many officials um, have been able to advance in. So everything about Seacoast, like I said, is being team oriented, um, organized and in education. And we make sure that our guys have expectations and we're going to make sure that they're set and followed. And if you don't follow them, um, then you're not going to be a part of it. It's sim simple as that. And uh, <laughs> when we first started Seacoast, people weren't uh, too pleased, you know, who were officiating adult hockey. At the time I was 27, um, I was working pro hockey and uh, I had, you know, 50, 60 year old officials and I set expectations like this is pro hockey environment now. Yeah, I'm not asking you to, you know, be an NHL referee on the ice, but there's certain things that I want you to do. And if you don't do it, you're not going to be a part of it. And we had a lot of guys quit right off the bat. Yeah. And I understood, you know, that's fine. We're, we're OK with that. We'll see you down the road. You know, a lot of people didn't think it was going to work. A lot of my friends thought it was a joke at first. But, I mean, here we are. It's six years later. Um, we assigned 13,000 games a year. And with you guys on board, I mean, it's going to go up yeah. tremendously. Um, we're no longer just in Massachusetts and New Hampshire. We're now fully established in southern New Jersey in Philadelphia. We assigned tournaments all the way through Santa Rosa, California, down in Texas, Seattle, Florida. I mean, we're all over the place. So, you know, the once being a joke is now something legitimate and people want to be a part of it. So that that's yeah, Seacoast. Yeah, man, I can definitely relate to that. Um, telling people that you're going to start a uh, men's league. Uh, <laughs> you, same thing. It was a joke. And it was like, you know, I mean, I kicked it around for a couple of years. And um you know, most of the reaction that I got was the same. It's like, what are you like? What are you gonna do? You're gonna start a men's league, and you're and I explain all the things that I want to do, and and it's really just um, like putting like a professional level into adult hockey, and I think that's kind of what drew me to Seacoast uh, was kind of the values that aligned with that. Like, you know, there's this culture um, of men's league or adult league hockey that you know it shouldn't be taken seriously, and you know, while you don't have to take it super seriously, um, you can um, take part in a competitive, fun league. It doesn't have to be, you know, you don't have to make a mockery of playing uh, adult league just because you you maybe played 
junior B somewhere and it's not as cool as, you know, the like men's league is like a step down or whatever. But, right. you know, we always make a joke like, you know, all roads lead to the U. You're going to end up in men's league somewhere, right? And like, even, at, even at the highest level, you know, when you get older, you end up playing with us. You I know? mean, that's that's a joke even in pro hockey. We we all hear, you know, at the end of the day, you went, everybody ends up in, in, in adult hockey, either as a referee <laughs> yeah, or a player. Yeah. And, you know, honestly, I, I really love, you know, the word culture that, you mm-hmm. know, you said, because cu- culture in adult hockey you know, in a lot of places is, you know, don't take it serious. It's okay. You know, it's adult hockey. Yep. And listen, that's fine. No one should get stressed out playing or officiating adult hockey. Mm-hmm. Like I don't, I make sure that my referees, my scorekeepers are well aware of that. Yep. Don't you, I don't want you being stressed out refereeing in an adult league game. Yep. If you, if you give a hundred percent, you're accountable and you do things that you can control, you know, fitness or, or know the rule book. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Act like you care. That's all I could ask for. Mistakes are going to happen. Mistakes yeah. happen all the way up to the NHL. Sure. But it's the it's it's the officials that that come here. They show up, you know, ten minutes, you know, into the first period, or you know, run onto the ice during warm ups, or you know, don't even show up at all. I mean, that's that's kind of the culture that it was at, back in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, when I first came in. Yeah. And, you know, I set the tone right off the bat. Guys, I'm not asking you to, to, to go, you know, balls to the wall, but I, I want you to respect that this is still a hockey game. Respect the game of hockey. Respect your, your brothers and sister officials because you doing something stupid on the ice gives someone else the, the, the thought in their mind that all officials suck or yeah. all officials don't care or all officials don't want to communicate. It, it it's a process and we all need to take that step and give a little more to work on being better officials and proving that we are better. And, you know, it, it, it like I said early on, like I had a lot of people seriously quit on me, you know, right off the bat. I'm not doing that. I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not going to take it serious, but I mean, people bought into it and the people who bought into it, it showed, and and that's why Seacoast grew. I mean, we've doubled every year. It, it, it's tremendous how quick this has grown. I've never thought this was going to get to where it was. But when the guys that quit saw that it it didn't fold, and they sat back, they go, "Oh my god, like this is legit. Like yes. people are really liking this." I mean, what what league doesn't want that? What league doesn't want to hear from an assigner, you know, that you care and it's a you know you got to care about your clients and their customers, otherwise. There is no games. There's no money to be made or you're going to lose the business, yeah. you know? And so we got all those people back and then some. Yeah. And and so, yeah, cult- culture is everything about this. And that that's that's why Seacoast is what it is today, is, is based on culture. Yeah. And in, in even just breaking it down to, you know, we have from a business perspective, we have, you know, 600 700 players that all pay to play hockey right and even so you know officials scorekeepers get paid to do a job right so it's like i said we don't have to go go crazy but you have to take it serious like you're doing doing a job so um most you know most of our officials we have a lot of great officials in our league right but we what the problem that we had was um a lot of inexperienced ones, right? So with the, I, obviously everybody knows there was a shortage of uh, referees, especially in this area. I don't know, I don't know about your area, but uh, we lost quite a bit. So there was a lot of new, new refs and it's, um, and that's fine. I was there, I was, I was a new ref at 1.2. Like there's a lot to learn. There's a lot to, um, you just need time and games to, to be able to do the right things and, and learn. Um, but we needed a better avenue to get those guys more up to speed. So we needed a little bit more resource. We need a little bit more help uh, to get those guys better because, you know, we want to see them succeed because we, you know, we succeed too. We we have happier customers, which are really players. Um, and that's, what's the most important to me is that all the players and even, and the officials as well are a little bit um, are happier. Right. And I don't want, you know, there's a lot of abuse that goes on with officials, man. It's just kind of, 
I hate to say it's part of the territory, but it doesn't have to be, you know what I mean? I always tell guys like, you don't have to deal with that. Just kick them out. Like there's nothing, right. you know, we put in, we brought in Seacoast also for our department of player safety. Right. So we didn't have really an avenue to, um, to kind of like, I don't want to say <laughs> to get rid of the bad eggs, you know, in the league, but everyone had there it's hockey, right. There's going to be a lot of them. Right. But the old avenue was um, through USA Hockey was, you know, their three strike policy or whatever it was. It's like, what, one game, then three games, and then you're, you're out or five. I don't, I don't know what it is. But mm-hmm. um, every time I went to, to USA Hockey for like a suspension or something like that, they kind of just bounced it back to me. And they were like, you could just do whatever you want. And I'm like, well, that doesn't help me. You know, that doesn't help me at you're, all. You're paying all this money to be USA <laughs> sanctioned. And it's like there's yeah. no, no guidance, no providing of, of any assistance. It's it's quite annoying. Yeah. yeah. It's basically, yeah. You can put your logo on the, is whatever, you know, but, um, and then the thing is, is with that rule. So a guy could get suspended twice in one season. And then once the next season starts, which our seasons are only four months long, it wipes clean. Right. Like, and so we brought in Seacoast for that. So it's a third party. I don't have to be involved. I know a, a, I play in the league. Right. So I know so many players ones that get suspended, ones that are prob you know, start shit. And I'm like kind of stuck in the middle, especially I like I, I told you I had a situation where um we were in a playoff game. It was a fi- like the finals. And there was um it was game two of a three game series. We had tied the series, but there was um a questionable like two people, their best probably best two players on the other team we're worthy of getting suspended for the next game. Right. But it's, it's me. And it's like, what, what do I do? It's it's like, okay, am I just, just I'm going to get accused of spending them. So What's they don't have to play. Really it's win yeah. it's game three. Yeah. Right. So it's yeah. like, so, and then I just, I was like, you know what, I'm not going to suspend them because I, I don't want to hear the excuse or whatever. If it's easier just to let it go. And um, that's why we brought in the third party. That was like the turning point for me. I was like, okay, I need to not be involved in this. And that's kind of how we started off with Seacoast. Yeah, um, yeah, that was uh, that was back in. I, I originally reached out to you in September. Yeah. Um, kind of got the cold shoulder from you, bud. Not really. It was <laughs> a joke, but no. But you yeah. know, I remember you saying, you know, reach out in in December. I know you were, you know, beginning of the season, you were pretty busy. But yeah. um, you know. I'm I'm really happy that we reached out to you in December, you know, got DOPS going. Mm-hmm. It, you know, one of the biggest things, I mean, you threw a lot out right there, but something that I did want to mention, and, you know, if any officials are are listening to this, you know, a lot of my guys, you know, I, I, I would hope, you know, say, you know, agree with this. I, I have my officials back 100% right off the bat. Regar- regardless of what's going on, until I see something, I'm going to have their back. Now, if we see a video and they clearly did something wrong, well, then, you know, we, we got to address that with the official. Mm-hmm. But one, one of the biggest things that I've learned from my supervisors, and I'll never forget from pro hockey, you know, they said it from the beginning and they said it throughout the entire time I worked. We have your backs until you, you screw up. And then it's accountability time. You know, now, now you got to take accountability for your actions. Yeah. So something big, you know, and that's a reason why I created DOPS in the first place. You know, like you were saying, you know, a lot of guys getting away with stuff. A lot of leagues were too big, couldn't handle it up up in Massachusetts, New Hampshire. And nothing was getting done. So, you know, players would do something stupid. They'd be back next week. It got to a point where referees were like, and, and at this point, I wasn't even assigning everything yet. You know, I was just hearing it from other competitors, you know, other assigners and other referees working other leagues. Why the hell are we calling penalties and kicking these guys out if they're just coming back next week? Mm-hmm. And guys were getting frustrated and of, you know, of course, rightly so. And, you know, I took advantage of it. I was like, holy, you know, holy crap. Like, let's do it. Let, yeah. Let's create a, let's create a department of player safety. And I utilized a really big adult league up in Massachusetts, New Hampshire, um, as a testing. And it happened to be now the biggest, thank God, you know, so now it's, it's like a piece of cake. If we can do the biggest one up in that region, we can go anywhere now. Cause we're, we're used to it. Yeah. And so, you know, I, the first year or so I, I did it by myself and it was a lot along with assigning, you know, it, it was really time consuming, especially setting the standards with players and stuff. But, you know, we ended up getting the referees, you know, back, you know, it was like a, a fresh, you know, fresh breath of air in, in the wind, in the sails. You know what I mean? Like, 
guys were like, all right, well, you know, something's being done now. And, you know, let's start calling penalties again. And, you know, the fact that, you know, we were handed the keys to the car to make the decisions for our, our clients too. So not only are we assigning the refs, but we're getting the incident reports from the refs and we're making the final decisions for the refs. So it's not like someone else is doing it. We get control of it, which is great. Obviously, you know, guidance by, you know, yourself for the UHL and the protocols that you want us to put in place, you know, how many max suspensions or games for a suspension or minimum, et cetera, what kind of rules are put in place? Like you guys govern that, but you know, once we get those, those protocols, those procedures off we go. And it's fantastic. Like you said, for yourself, like, you're playing in the championship game. Someone does something stupid and now you got to make the decision. Like that looks terrible. <laughs> so does, yeah. that's the best thing about it too, is, you know, we're the third neutral party, you know, yeah. go ahead, yell at me. I, I played high end hockey. My partner, you know, played hockey East and is now in the American league. I've worked up, you know, through NHL rookie games myself. So we've played at a high level as a player and a high level as an official. Yeah. I see it as a player and I see it as a referee. Mm-hmm. I've done many times where I've, look back at a, a suspension or an altercation and I've rescinded a suspension in favor for the player. Same on the other side for the referee. So, you know, if any of your players are listening right now, I hope you guys know, you know, Austin uh, O'Rourke, who's now our director of uh, player safety, you know, he, he isn't just there to, you know, suspend you. If he thinks something isn't suspendable, he, he's got your back too. So, but um, yeah, it Dops has been really good for us. It's definitely helped the officials. And what's great about it too is, you know, being the assigner and the head of Dops, we kind of control now everything in regards to officiating. And it helps us with education. So mm-hmm. when we get those altercations, we pull the videos, we save the videos, and now we use them for educational purposes. And another big thing that Seacoast is about that we started, you know, a year and a half ago was our Seacoast Academy. So we also do seminars for beginner referees. Um, We also run advanced courses for guys that are trying to go up to college, whether they want to be a referee or a linesman. Um, And then we also do stuff for the scorekeepers as well. Our director of scorekeepers, Alex Bassani, um, who's been terrific for us. Uh, He's worked up through International Federation Games down in Dallas. He worked the U18 championships. You know, we, we have guys that have worked high levels that know these positions that that want to give back. And it just, it's up to these guys, these guys, you know, everywhere in our stable, whether you're from New England or you're from New Jersey, Pennsylvania, if you're from, you know, Texas, Florida, wherever you are in our group, you know, you have guys to, util, you know, to use, to, to observe, absorb information from. So, you know, take it. And, you know, it kind of goes back to what we originally talked about. It, it's adult hockey. And some guys, some guys just do it for the money and that's fine. You know what I mean? But, but learn a couple things along the way. Make your life easier. We're here yeah. to try to make your life easier on the ice so you won't have that fight in the third period. Maybe, you know, something that Austin or I can teach you about refereeing makes you aware of that slash in the first period that maybe was missed that you now call that prevents the guy in the third period from elbowing the guy in the face and causes the guy to punch him, and now we have a five-on-five brawl. Yes. So, yeah, man, we're, we're really excited. Um you know, with our educational stuff, you know, where it's a work in motion still. Um, like I think I shared with you yesterday, we're, we're, you know, continuously revising our PowerPoints, adding new videos for the referees and the scorekeepers. And, um, you know, we think with that, it, it's really going to help our referees and scorekeepers advance if they want to. And the guys that are here just to make a couple extra bucks, you know, get out of the house at night, try to make their lives easier, you know, working yeah. that 9 and 1030 game at night. Yeah, and part of like, um, so, I mean, so the, if I can go back to the player safety thing, it's not only for me, it's also for the refs, the officials too, because um, now we create like a history for that player. So uh, Austin documents, you know, even if they don't get suspended, but they do something that's like borderline or, or they have, or some sort of misconduct, he records it, man. So when the time comes and we have to make a decision whether they they need to play in, they can play in our league anymore. Now we have a full history of that player. So obviously this is a, like a work in progress and it takes time. But, um, you know, I had a, a official approach me last night and was asking like, what are the steps? You know what I mean? Because, um, before guys were getting away with a lot of stuff, um, probably just because I didn't have 
the resource time to really analyze every single incident in, in every play. But since since we've had um, you guys come in, we've had like what <clears throat> close to twenty suspensions, and then uh, one indefinite suspension. So one guy that was out for good. Um, you know, we've had we've kind of cleaned it up a bit and now with bringing in officials or you guys for the officials now the education and the support helps with controlling games and being able to get these guys um you know if they honestly if the players when they when a player you ever know i mean this is my personal experience but when a player respects the official respects the job that they're doing they tend to behave Right, they tend to respect the game. They, they tend to not they tend to not get out of control. They're they're more uh, communication opens up. Right, if they feel like it's just a free for all, you know what I mean. Obviously, stuff gets out of control in that regard. Yeah, I mean it's it's a two way street, right? Like the referees got to earn their stripes um, at any level that they work, and you know at the same time, the the players got to respect the officials and and understand again, you know we understand there's a culture and, you know, we respect it, but at the end of the day, it is recreational hockey, mm -hmm. you know, win or lose, it doesn't affect your nine to five job, you yep. know, get a, get some exercise, hang out with the guys or the ladies, you know, whoever, whatever team you're on yep. and, you know, have a good time. You know what I mean? I, I think success is, you know, you, you walked off the ice, you're not injured. You had a great time yep. and, you know, you're able to play again. You know, there's people that mm -hmm. aren't even fortunate team and skate anymore. Right. That, you know, used to play. So, yeah. Um, yeah, I, I think before, you know, uh, you know, beforehand, not assigning the officials for the UHL, it, there was a, a, a part of this missing, right? Because yeah, we were running dops and we were receiving videos, but couldn't really, we didn't really want to talk to the officials, right? I've never been one to try to go in behind a, another person's back, right? And, and try to reach out to officials, mm -hmm. you know, I make sure that we, we earn it, you know, something that you and I discussed, you know, if, if we were going to come in and work with you guys and, you know, I will, I wanted something public, you know, by you guys first and w to make sure we did it the right way. And, and we did it the right way. I really do believe we did it the right way. Mm -hmm. And with that being said, you know, now that we are able to talk to these independent contractors, these guys who can work for whomever they want, right. Mm -hmm. um, adding us now as the assigners and in, in running DOPS, not only are we receiving the incident reports from our guys now, but we can also educate them and contact them, have conversations, you know, share with them our two cents, ask them what they saw, you know, maybe we saw some different than them. They were there, but it, it adds that educational element. Right. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, that's something that I'm really looking forward to. That's, that's what keeps me going now. You know, now, now that I'm not really refing full time anymore, I kind of live through the other guys. You know, especially the guys that are younger, trying to move up. Like those are those are the guys I live, you know, live through now. Uh, th that's what keeps me going doing this. Yeah, that's a pretty cool thing to do. Um, I'm actually pretty excited, man. I was a like I I've told you before, I was a ref for a while. I did it when I was younger. Um, just I didn't like. I think probably from like uh, age f uh, fourteen to um, probably eighteen or nineteen, something like that when we had the rink around here, we used to have a rink in town, a beautiful one. Uh, it had since closed, closed when I was about 20 or 21 years old. Uh, but refing was a great way to, to make some extra money, but also, um, you know, things were a little different back then. I feel there was, I, there was always, um, I was always paired with someone, um, who was more of a mentor and was very, um, very experienced, very, um, like knew what was going on. And and it kind of taught me a lot of things as I went up, you know, I had to start in the mites and the peewees and then I eventually worked my way up to adult hockey. And I, I did like, like I was like a linesman for like a couple, they used to bring some uh, college level games through, through the, as like a college showcase or mm -hmm. like, you know, that higher level. Um, so I got to do that. Um, it's been about 15 years uh since i last ref that i think i sent you the picture of that my ref thing i dug it out of like an old my attic you know and uh i'm actually excited because you know i would like to to jump back in it um for a couple of reasons one to um 
to learn a little bit about what's going on and to um, be a little bit more um, be close with the the league in and of itself. So I get to to go to games that I otherwise would not usually go to. I can be a part of it. I can hear and listen what's going on. Kind of get in touch more in touch and more close with with everybody who's uh, doing and see ways that we can improve the league. And obviously being able to talk to guys and talk to other refs, talk to players. You know, here everyone's got. I get so many text calls. Uh, people stop me at the rink with great suggestions man stuff that we've used you know what i mean everyone's yeah. got uh some great suggestions we have refs that um one of our one of our, my favorite refs uh his name's steve as well um he he said you know i have a couple i have a few great ideas and he just named off a couple and i was like see that's the stuff that like i need to be able to hear more often like he had some great suggestions and some great tips i think things that was like introspective from him being a ref and being within it, you know what I mean? And trying right. to get things better. Um, so I'm, I'm excited the direction that we're going, you know, um, you know, there is a certain way of doing things around in this area. I don't know if it's like that anywhere else, but to me, it's like, if you keep doing the same things that you've always done, you're going to get what you always got. Right. And, you know, while we have some great, great officials that do a great job that that stand in there and take the abuse from all these fucking some crazy players you know what i mean and like some guys are out of control yeah. and and you know you know some of the shit that they go through not necessarily just like it's not worth what they're getting paid right it's like right, that's not enough money to deal with some of the shit that they deal with but they do it night in night out and um you know i really appreciate appreciate them as a whole uh but i do feel like we can get better you know it is called the ultimate adult hockey league right we can't have everything else be top notch above the level F and not try to improve every single aspect of the of the league itself so it's not just playing hockey or the social media or the content that we put out or the special events that we do it's like we have to do it from start to finish like we got to do it everything right and officials and scorekeeping it, it goes with, with that no absolutely and i i think something that you know kind of goes into this which is huge is leaving the usa hockey sanctioned right we mm -hmm. kind of mentioned briefly yeah. with with you leaving usa hockey right uh you're you're now kind of like what my, a lot of my clients up in massachusetts and new hampshire are a, a lot of adult leagues up in new england are not usa sanctioned Mm -hmm. and I, I'm I'm starting to learn that a lot of USA sanctioned adult leagues are in, you know, the Midwest outside of like hockey, hockey, like bays, like Michigan and Minnesota and Massachusetts and, you know, yeah, Philly and such. But um, like, I, I think that's one of the best decisions to make was to leave USA hockey because now, you know, when we hire our officials, right, obviously we, we would like them to be USA certified, whether, you know, they are currently or in the past. Mm -hmm. um, but we have the option and, and opportunity as well with our clients not being USA hockey to hire anybody. So with that being said, you know, any players that are watching this video, I highly recommend and, and request, you know, if you're interested in trying to officiate, if you want to come to the, you know, the rinks and make a couple extra bucks refing, mm -hmm. give it a go. You know, we do beginner seminar courses. Uh, it's a one night course, you know, 530 to about 1030, 11 o'clock at night. We do a three hour PowerPoint, which basically involves levels one through two uh, of USA Hockey PowerPoints. We crunch them into one and we basically teach you what needs to be done, where to position, how to act in a, an adult league environment. And then we bring you onto the ice and teach you the positioning. And I think something, you know, you were sharing that you, you know, you, you, you uh, officiated back when you were 14 and such. And, you know, I was listening to you and I, I was kind of laughing because, you know, I didn't start officiating until I was maybe 19, 20 years old mm -hmm. when I was just doing adult hockey for the fun of it. And I really wish that I, I did it earlier because, you learn so much about, you know, the other side of the game. And I wish I knew as a player, because I, I was an asshole as a player. Like, I, I had no problem telling a ref he sucked. And, 
you know, I regret it now. Right. I mean, the emotions got the best of me, but seeing it from the officiating side now, like it, it is, it is beneficial as a player to understand the officiating side and how hard it really is. You know, yep. I remember the first time I officiated, I did a squirt game. Um, cause I was USA certified my first year and my first game ever, um, was a, a squirt game. And I missed an offsides call because I was looking as a player thinking I was on the bench. And <laughs> and that's honestly one of the hardest things that, you know, converting from a player to an official, I think, you know, you, mm-hmm. you can agree is, you know, you're no longer watching as a spectator or a player. You, you are in control of the game. Like it's up yeah. to you to make that offsides call or call that icing or call the penalty, the infraction. Right. So, yep. um, no, I, I think, you know, going back to you being non USA sanctioned, it opens a lot of doors for us to bring in new officials if we need to. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, as I've shared from the beginning, all the current U- UHL officials, they're, they're staying. They're going to work. Yeah. Um, you know, from what I've shared to everybody so far is that we have expectations. And, and I've, I think I've pretty much shared what those are from the beginning. Um, yeah. You know, be professional. Take it serious. Um, and, and know that you're representing Seacoast hockey officials, yourself, your partners, the clients, and, and, you know, ultimately the game of hockey, respect it all. And if you can't do that, then yeah, we're, we're going to find replacements, Mm -hmm. but we're hoping that, you know, the people that are, you know, officiating right now buy into this process because it does work. And by doing that, you're going to make your lives easier on the ice by doing what we're asking and what we're willing to teach you. And it's going to keep you from getting barked at by those players in the long run and make you stop thinking, why the hell am I doing this at 1030 at night? Because you're going to go out there with these new skills and techniques that USA Hockey or, you know, previous assigners in the region have failed to teach. You're going to go out there with this stuff and your games are going to be so much easier. Yep. And you're going to be like, I- I'll do this all day. Yep. So, um, yeah, it, it's, it, it is really exciting. Um, especially with the non-USA hockey. And like like I said just now, if any players in the UHL or you know anybody in the region that's listening to this, um, if you're not USA hockey certified, but you've always been interested in refereeing and you don't want to do USA hockey, reach out to us. We'll set up a beginner's course. It's a one-night thing. You'll get the blessing from Seacoast hockey officials and <laughs> You know, we'll start using you in, in, in the Rusty division or, you know, bronze yeah. and, and slowly, act, you know, acclimate you to higher levels. But something else you touched on is, you know, when you first started, you were working with a mentor, right? Mm-hmm. And that's been taken away. And it's it's not really the assigners, you know, all the assigners' faults. There is some assigners to point fingers at. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, with, with the shortage of officials, it's it's really turned into a fill, you know, fill a game, just fill a game with anybody. Yep. And I think it it's hurt. It's hurt us just as much as the abusive officials thing that has come into play with USA hockey. And to just quickly go into that. Yes. Pl- you know, coaches, players, parents, the abusive officials has been horrendous, but USA hockey has been made aware of this for a really long time, at least a decade. Mm-hmm. And it's been ignored. And once it finally got to a breaking point, you know, they, they blasted this out, you know, and they taught, you know, at USA hockey seminars with officials, you know, basically to become a dictator on the ice, you know, you're in control. Don't take that crap, kick the guy out of the game, blah, blah, blah. And I think that has hurt the officials more than it has helped us because it's, it's not teaching our officials how to be better managers psychologically and communication wise on the ice. It's, it's, it's adding fuel to the fire by becoming that authoritative dictator on the ice. And no coach, I'm not listening to you. You say another word, I'm kicking you out. Like there's a much better way to go about that. If the coach is barking about something, bring him over and and say, listen, we're not yelling. Let's have a conversation. And it's at this tone. I'm not yelling. It's nice and soothing. All right. What's going on coach. All right. Clearly we didn't see eye to eye on this. This is what I had. Is there anything else? No, we're good done so much easier than saying i'm not listening to you you say another word you're out <laughs> and and that's something yeah. that is not taught at usa hockey and and a big issue is that you know our our people that are teaching seminars are volunteers and a lot of them haven't worked at the levels that teach the things that i just said yeah and you know 
I've taken advantage of it. I'm sorry, but I've taken advantage of it and I've, I'm, I'm implementing it into my own business. I mean, USA hockey doesn't want to pay us. I'm sorry, but my time's valuable just as much as the guys that work in Colorado. If they're not going to pay us to teach, I'll do it myself. And that's what we're doing. Yeah. So, you know, there's a lot of things, like I said, not taught. And if people just buy into the process and little things like learning the psychological factors, learning how to communicate, how to engage a player, recognize and be aware that, you know, the, the, the fire is, is starting to grow. It's our turn. It's our time to put out the fire. Yeah. Don't, don't tell the, the player to go fuck himself. Yes. That's going to raise the, that you know, the fire up, right? <laughs> yeah. Talk to him. Listen, I, I'm not going to sit here and be mother Teresa. I've had my time and I've, I'll probably do it again and tell a, a player to go fuck himself, <laughs> you know, but at the same time, I recognize there's better ways to handle a situation and to keep a guy from jumping off the cliff and, and setting, you know, world war three in a, in a, in a game at 10 30 at night. Yeah. So, um, yeah, I, I just went down a huge rabbit hole and I'm sorry, but <laughs> no, it's, really like I said, weird. yeah, we, there's a lot, a lot to benefit from leaving USA hockey and, you know, a lot of things that we can do um, without them being involved, which is great. Yeah. We kind of went back and forth. Um, so when we first started the league, uh, USA hockey was just something I was always, um, I was obviously affiliated or worked with USA hockey. And that was just kind of like the, the standard. And um, when we were kind of breaking into the scene, it was like, all right, we need a stamp of, legitimacy right we need to have something that kind of sets us apart so just honestly god man it was like i want to be able to put usa hockey on our logo so it's like okay you see this is a new league coming in it says usa hockey great like i can i can trust what they're going to do because we had no dude, we had no like no real we didn't no one ever started our adult hockey league business in here before right so um or, you know, it'd be from other areas, but we needed to have that stamp of approval. And that's the direction we went. And, um, you know, we kind of kicked it back and forth. Um, the, the amount of money that they charge that each player has to has to pay. And honestly, uh, for what you get in return, it's just not worth it. You're not getting anything in return, honestly. Um, a claim, I tried to make a claim and they kind of just told me to you know, kick rocks pretty much, but, uh, um, make you feel like a criminal basically. Like, you know, exactly. every, every, every question that they could ask to make sure that, you know, all oh, we, you don't fall under the criteria. We can't insure you. Sorry. Yeah. For me, it was honestly like they, they withheld information. Like I was like, you know, I said, I filled out all the stuff that they needed and, um, I was like, okay, well I have to go tell my surgeon, my doctors, like, uh, the doctor's office, like, what do I, I need to have information? And they were just like, Oh yeah, just tell them like, you know, we're this, this and that, and this, and I'm like, that doesn't, I need like, not, I need like a claim number. I need like an actual thing to give. And they were just like, and then they just blew me off. And I was like, dude, if you, you know, like, so like, what are we really paying for? What am I forcing my players to pay 50, 60 bucks a year for? Um, so we kind of went around, found a different insurance, um, and actually like pretty proud to say like we, since we started, we hadn't raised rates, um, for good, you know, we, we could, we, for the amount of extra things we do would have been nice. Right. But, um, we didn't raise rates until this upcoming season, but with getting rid of USA hockey, they actually saved money in the long run. So we, we, we cover our expenses to in, bring in another insurance but also they end up saving about 50%. So they pay about half of what they would have paid for USA hockey. So um, I think it's kind of like a win-win for us. And um, to be honest, from a league perspective, they offered nothing that was beneficial, educational, supportive, um, nothing. You know what I mean? Anytime I went to them, they just said, it's your league, do whatever you want. And I was like, well, what the hell is the point of me? What's on? the point? Exactly. Yeah, exactly. So, um, but looping around, man, like I'm excited to um, to have you guys and and see what we can do, you know, in getting this better, man. We get we get complaints and some most are not 
I'm going to say, like, I'm going to throw the, a lot of the players under the bus here, but a lot, a lot of the complaints are not really justified, but some are. And, um, you know, if we can, if that's my, listen, we, you know, I like to think we do a great job, right? So if we don't get many complaints, if any, but this is the complaint that we get, right? Start times, which I have not, I do my best, right? But I, I'm kind of at the mercy of the ring for start time. And then you have officiating. So like, uh, if we can at least work towards making one of those things better, um, I think, you know, we'll always do that for the players and for the league itself. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I know... I see it with everybody, you know, every other client, the adult, you know, adult league times, they keep getting later and later because the rinks keep pushing you back further and further because they want to sell more ice to everybody else. Right. So, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lot of work on your end. And, you know, I hope players understand that it's, it's really not easy to, you know, fight these ranks for, for the ice time. So, you know, it's something for, you know, everybody to know, you know, it's, it's not easy to be Steve and, 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 and co at times. And, yeah. Regarding the officials, you know, the, I think the biggest thing to understand that it's 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 not the officials themselves; it's who's training them, mm -hmm. right? And um, I think there's been a lack of officiating, you know, training, and officiating. Yeah. And um, you know, that's it, it's a lack of consistency, mm -hmm. and and the lack of consistency in every call or you know how something is being called is is where the problem lies and listen it's it's not just in an adult hockey it's at every level of hockey right yeah. and um you know you just see it in in lower levels because there's obviously more games and you know it's not at a professional rankings but you know those are things that can be prevented and i think that seacoast takes pride in in like we said the educational portion and and making sure that our guys know the standards and the expectations of, you know, what is consistent standards, what we want you to call and what we don't want you to call. And I think with that, you know, with us coming in, we're going to lay that out right from the beginning at every season and being dots as well. We have the opportunity to take those videos and show our officials, but not just educate our officials. Dops is also made to educate the players. Yeah. Right. So it, it's a twofold. It it benefits the officials, but it also benefits the league in general, because if the players are learning what standards are, hopefully they start playing by those standards, which makes the officials lives more easier. Right. Because now they don't have to make all those calls. Mm -hmm. But if the officials don't make the calls from the beginning, there's no standard. Right. You, you got to set the, the line, the line in the sand. And it starts with the officials. Mm hmm. If if we buy into that process and we do that, the players have to play by that process and that standards. Otherwise, they don't play, right? So, yeah. but if we don't set the standard, they're going to continue playing the way they do, and then the players are going to continue to bitch. You know, it, it's just it's a cycle. So, you know, that's something that we're going to you know set right at right at the beginning when we have our first you know meeting. I've already reached out to officials and I told them that we're planning on having a meeting, you know, end of April, first week of, of May. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're still waiting for the date, time, and location. Kind of depends on my wife you know, as we're having our first child. But um, <laughs> once we get that figured out, um, you know, yeah, we're, we're coming down and we're going to hold an in-person seminar with all our current UHL officials. Making mm -hmm. sure that we have. Are you are you coming? Yeah, fuck, I can use it, dude. Until it's been a while, too. <laughs> so. But yeah, we're. I mean, we're gonna run a, a basic seminar. You know, we're, we're gonna sit down. We're gonna go over what our standards are. Where where do we want you to be? You know, how do we want you to act? How you're representing us? You know, how you're representing yourself? Mm -hmm. You know, it, it sounds silly, but you 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 truly never know who's in the building, and p people talk to other people. You know, it may not have to be a, a big time supervisor, but what if there's someone that knows of someone and starts talking, you know, wow, I saw this official in a Dolly game tonight. Should maybe take a look at them. And, then, you know, they, it sounds stupid, but it, it has happened. You know, it has happened. Yeah. yeah. I've had, uh, you know, a, a woman, woman's hockey supervisor. I had, I had it called for a girl and she ended up being the first linesman in, in the ECHL. Nice. So, I mean, we have the, the capabilities of, 
bringing people to the next level. So, you know, once, once we have these seminars, we're going to set the tone, you know, this is what we want to do on the ice. And then we're going to go on the ice uh, at the end of the seminar so we can eval everybody, see where everybody is. And it's, it's not a test to see if you're good or not. I, I just want to know where you're at, what, what you're, where you're at, what you're capable of. Mm-hmm. And, and if you truly care and you want to put time and invest into it, I'm your guy. I, I want to invest in my time into you. If you want to learn more, please utilize me. Utilize Austin. Mm-hmm. We're, we want to make your life in, in, in your officiating better. But, you know, it, it takes people to take that step and being willing to do it. And um, we're hoping, you know, those guys want to do it. And uh, the guys that do want to take that step and want to do the expectations are going to be the guys that work. Yeah. And again, you know, you being non-USA sanctioned now, it, get, it opens another door for us, you know, to bring in other officials if we, if we need to. And it's not a threat, but it is a business. And we got to make sure that we maintain that that standard. Otherwise, you know, you're you're looking for someone else again, and we don't want that. So yeah, yeah, yeah. With that being said, man, I appreciate it. Hopefully, uh, I'll get this uploaded and get some eyes on this, and um, you know, players can see that we're we're trying to make some positive changes, and and hopefully, um, they kind of go in line with that as well, and and give you guys a little bit of um, you know, it's going to be a process. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, it takes a lot of work to 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 um to improve even one percent right so everyone knows that um you know if we can get every, get eyes on it and let everybody know like hey you know take it easy on our on our officials you know some guys give them a hard time and you know try to make their lives a little easier for me for for the league and for your teammates for everybody man um i'd like to uh to keep this you know get the, make this better and better and better and then you know keep going to the next level so we're gonna right. keep growing man i know bigger and better, better things <laughs> always but uh right. yeah no, it's gonna be it's gonna be a lot of fun and i'm really really pumped for for that first meeting with all the other officials and and yeah. uh seeing how the may, may you know spring summer season goes um and yeah i think a huge thing is you know making sure these players do understand that it, it is it is a work in progress. It's not going to be done overnight. It's not going to be done just in the spring and summer. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, there's there's going to be a, a shit ton of more penalties probably called, you know, as <laughs> as we create a standard, right? Yeah. You know, yeah. and that and that did happen though up up in New Hampshire in in Mass. I mean, we set a standard, especially when DOPS was created. I mm-hmm. mean, we went full out. Like we got the blessing from ownerships of of adult leagues up there. And we literally set the tone. I mean, there was penalties, penalties, penalties. But not, now we we are, have a standard where guys understand, like, I can't do that stupid hook or, you know, tomahawk a guy in the shin pads anymore. You know what I mean? Like, that's a penalty. Yeah. And, you know, the leagues, you know, three penalties, you're out type of stuff now. So, you know, yeah. you, you got to think twice before you do that. Yeah, for sure. But, you know, as, a, as an official kind of – controlling the game is is kind of like an art in of itself like there's a there's a way of going about it and um you know you can a mistake you make in the first period comes back to haunt you pretty quick so uh <laughs> well your first your first call of the game right it sets the standard of how that game's going to be played mm-hmm. and one of the biggest things to understand in the game of hockey every game is different in itself you know the officials set set the standard on how a game is going to be played and I'll never forget learning this. Um, I was, it was actually, I think I was, where the hell was I? I think I was in Manchester. And I'll never forget this. You know, the supervisor came in and he told me, he's like, there's three things that, that should be your first call of the game. And I'll never forget it. He goes, clear turnover where he loses the, the puck and it goes the other way. Two, a, a clear scoring opportunity is taken away. And three, something so blatantly obvious that Helen Keller would have put her arm up and made the call for you. <laughs> and I'll never forget hearing that. And it stuck with me. And that's what I share with my officials now is, you know, your your first penalty of the game is going to set it. You know, yeah. if you're calling a hook where a guy gets hooked in the neutral zone, loses the puck for a second, but, but gains it back and continues on, you now got to call every penalty in the game. Yeah. And and a huge thing that's not taught that I love to teach is 
if you ever watch like European soccer or, or soccer in general, you'll see the referee give, you know, put his arms out after an infract, like a foul, right? But mm-hmm. he lets the play go. It, it's called an advance where the, the team that caused the infraction can't touch the ball mm-hmm. and, and allows the team to kind of move on until, and if they get, they get control of the ball or whatever, they blow the whistle, ball goes back, whatever. But that's the same thing as officiating at hockey. You got to let a play advance and see what the end result is. If if you're calling that first one, you know, a hook in the neutral zone, the guy gets hooked, loses the puck for a second, but continues on. You, you got a long night ahead of you. you you're, yeah. you th- your arm's going up every every minute at that point. But if your first one is a legitimate, you know, trip or hook and the guy gets twisted, you know, a guy takes the puck and starts going the other way. Well, that's that's an easy one yeah. that now sets the tone. This mm-hmm. is what we're calling. And if you say that to a team that's bitching or a coach that's bitching, listen, this infraction caused you to now have the puck. That's an easy penalty. There's nothing to say to that. And yeah, and now you've set a, a great standard <laughs> in, in your in your game. And now we continue on. Everybody understands, all right, this this referee means means business. We're here to play some good hockey tonight. Yeah. That's a that's a I like that advice, honestly. That's a good good way of because you're right. If if you call something like that, you're gonna be you're gonna you're obligated to call everything at that point. Because then you're just gonna get a bunch of shit if it happens to the other team. Like that's a that's a as a player is frustrating. You know what that's I mean? Right. Like you have one call that's the, and then you have the same exact thing happen and it's not called. It's like well, I mean, you shouldn't have called the first one or you should have called both. But like, yep, probably but, should have not called the first one. But it, but it, there's another element that's added to it, right? You can't follow that that guidelines if you're not putting in the effort on the ice mm-hmm. if you're not skating to get to the positions that you need to be at how are you going to make the call to follow one of those three points that i just mentioned yeah and that's that's the biggest thing you know that isn't shared as well is yeah you can have those guidelines but if you're only going to go 50 percent on the ice and you're not going to get from you know the blue line to the goal line if you're r1 mm-hmm. you know the low man how how are you going to get to the sight line to see if that hook happened behind the net? You yeah. know what I mean? And and that's the problem. A lot of guys will make the call, you know, onside, offsides. Yeah, it's onsides, but they'll get stuck at the hash marks on the sidewall. Yep. You know what I mean? Take those three hard strides, get down to the goal line, and and have have the angle, have the view. Don't 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 miss the possible goal. Don't miss the possible hook or trip or slash behind the net. Yep. You know that's what's going to make you successful. As a referee, that's what's going to keep a player from barking at you because you missed the call because you didn't want to take the two extra strides to get down to the end zone in the first place, or you're not going to get bitched at because you just blocked the guy out from breaking out of the zone because you got stuck at the sidewall again yeah. because you, you didn't want to move. Mm-hmm. So you know that's those are the big things that you know need to be added to the culture of officiating in adult hockey, and those are all the things we're bringing, and yeah. we're going to have a fun time doing it too, and. You know, I, I I do want to just mention quickly, you know, I don't want to – I'm here for a good time, and I want officials that are watching this to know that. You know, I, I love having a great time. I'll go out and have a beer with you guys. You know, I'll, I'll go and shoot the shit with you in the locker room. I want to work with you on the ice as a, as a partner, you know, and if everything goes well, we're doing our jobs. Let's do it. Let's party. Let's have a great time. You know, yeah. I, that's what I'm about. But I have no problem being the bad guy either if I have to. And I don't like being a bad guy, but I'm really good at doing it if I have to. Right. And, <laughs> and you know, I, I just I don't want to sound like an asshole. But at the end of the day, this this is how you and I make our money, right? Mm-hmm. We have families and we gotta provide, right? Mm-hmm. And if if we're not doing our jobs, you know, I I'm I'm risking losing, you know, money that, you know, provides for my family. Yeah. And I think that's something I'm here for a good time, but I'm also here to fuck shit up. <laughs> you know, and, and I say that in a joking way, but I, yeah. you know, I, I'm serious. Yeah. Right. Like, and I, and I want to make sure that the officials, the players, everybody involved knows that like Jared, Jared's a goofy guy. You know, he, he likes to have a good time. You know, I'll go out and drink with you guys. Like well, let, let's shoot the shit. But yeah. at the same time, like if we're not going to, you know, take this serious, you know, Jared, Jared will come down on you and he's not afraid to come down and be direct. Yeah, and you know that's something that I I do want you know people to know is that I'm not this this dictator bad guy that's going to just 
be mean and, you know, keyboard warrior behind, you know, a desk yelling at you, you know, and through horizon, stuff like that. So, yeah. um, you know, I just wanted to make sure that that was known. Yeah, I'm sure they'll get to know you as it, as it goes on. And, you know, I think it'll be good to get, you know, we really do have a, a, a lot of great guys, a lot of guys that I play hockey with play against and, and that are, that are officials. And man, I've seen, I've seen some guys, uh, I won't name any, but if any, if the person who's listening will know I'm talking about them, but, <laughs> and some people who know that person, uh, I've seen an attitude change from a player that typically got into a lot of trouble, uh, became an official and kind of understood the other side of it and, and, and kind of, you know, changed, I don't want to say changed their ways, but have been a little bit more mindful of it you know what i mean so it's amazing how officiating truly does that i'm dead serious you know i said that back in in you know 20 or so minutes ago i wish i i I did officiating as a player because you truly Mm -hmm. see a different side of the game and you gain a lot of respect for officials you know because it is a hard thing so yeah that that's awesome to hear I'm, i'm really happy to hear that yeah and as a young official i learned that pretty quickly like i never I'm not the disrespectful type. Like I've never, I don't think I'm not a yell at the ref guy. Never was even before I was a ref. Um, but, um, you know, it's a hard job to do, man. It's, it's, it's a, you know, you give it a lot of respect. Um, it's, it's pretty hard to do. It's really hard to do, honestly, like to do really well, it's not easy. And, um, you know, you can, you can, you can, um, it's funny what you're talking about skating from uh, blue line to the goal line. One of my first like mentors was like, listen, kid, you don't know what the fuck you're doing. So you better be skating hard. Like you better be the, you better be at the blue line before they are. You better mm-hmm. be at the goal line <laughs> before they get back there. You know what I mean? And, and that's what I was, I was always one to keep warm too, because you're reffing fucking even Bantams and lower level. 6 a.m. Saturday morning, freezing cold. Yeah, yeah. exactly. <laughs> you're skating hard because you want to warm up. But, um, you know, I always prided myself on getting in those right positions so I can make the right call. And it took me a while, man. I remember like, um, I remember being so like timid, uh, and not seeing a penalty in front of my face and just like freezing up, Mm. you know what I mean? Like being that young. So I can't imagine, man, I never got thrown right into, into adult league games. Like I said, I was very, I was doing youth. I was doing young games where I can kind of learn and the game's a lot slower. Um, you know, at least from the, like the might ban them, peewee squirt, whatever level, even midgets, like, um, you know, it takes a lot of experience and, and jumping right in the men's league by not having any experience. That's a tough, that's a tough thing to do, honestly. And yep. to listen to guys who are not afraid to tell you what, how it is. So really am, uh, excited to bring you guys in and help those guys out to help helping them helps me, helps the players, helps the league, helps you obviously. Um, so I'm excited helps for them that, overall too, you know, it makes yeah. their experience better and, Hopefully, like the guys that do jump in, you know, for the first time or, you know, have USA certification for the first year this year, you mm-hmm. know, maybe being a little, you know, hesitant of grabbing some more games because they maybe had a bad experience, you know, yeah. from the previous assigners, you know, get if you're listening to this, give us a go, you know, give us a call, shoot me an email, shoot me a text. Um, let me know that you are new. We'll make sure that you're with a, a mentor. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we're working with you as well and make sure that you have the best experience and you're prepared as possible to have fun and, and make some good money working, you know, games that aren't as slow as kids at 7 a.m. on a Saturday morning. So brutal, dude. Yeah, <laughs> that's brutal. Yeah. Uh, throw me in Rusty, man. I need some uh, I need some experience. Yeah, well, <laughs> I want an evaluation, bit. too. I want an honor. <laughs> I'll give you evaluation, but man, I can't wait to see you in that nice uniform that you know oh, we're man. having ordered right now for our officials. Yes, those are going to be pretty bomb. And um, for for anybody else, um, for officials listening, we are uh, in the final process. After two years of trying to get uniforms for our guys, we are finally getting uniforms from Tidal Wave Sports, um, and they are super nice. They look just like professional uniforms. Numbers on the back, sublimated logo. Uh, our crest so if you are interested in ordering a jersey go to our homepage, uh, seacoasthockeyofficials.com and it'll be right there in order link it's actually going until uh, next monday the 8th so hopefully this video is up before that 
I'm going to probably upload it in the next couple hours. So <laughs> I think yeah. we're good. Awesome, so, man. All right, buddy. I appreciate your time. Yeah, it was a blast. And uh, really looking forward to uh, kicking it off in May. Here we yeah. go. Me too. Here we go, man. <laughs> all right, buddy. I'll all see right. you. All right, buddy. Bye.